going to show you how to draw slopes in two-point perspective and how to draw slopes even faster using the tools in the Concepts app for iPad OS. I'm Kevin Scott, your guide when it comes to doing design in an iPad. Even though there are many tips in this video specific to concepts, you can use these techniques to draw slopes in two-point perspective basically anywhere. And that would include napkins, drafting tables, or even face tattoos. There are links in the description below to get you to what you want to know. One of my biggest tips for digital drawing, including drawing in concepts, is to try to use two hands. That way you can keep drawing with your stylus while selecting menus with your offhand. And for that reason, I suggest trying to keep, so long as you can, your menu on the side of your offhand. However, you may see me in this video uh, using my right hand to select menus and drawing with one hand. And that is because I am petting goose. So if you hear some soft bird chatter in the background, that's what that is. A lot of designers struggle when it comes to drawing slopes. I think it gets brushed over a lot in drawing classes. Plus, when you're learning perspective for the first time, there is a lot to remember. Right, Goose? She just learned it. When you take a step back, it's not that hard. If you're not familiar with the basics of two-point perspective, there's a lot of great videos on YouTube. I suggest you go check one of those out now. So all of us here know a little bit about two-point perspective. Two-point perspective requires two vanishing points and a horizon line. A lot of drawings in two-point perspective, especially those of architecture and architectural interiors, involve slopes that are actually on planes that are parallel to those that converge to our vanishing points. And those slopes will actually always have vanishing points, which we call false vanishing points, that are either directly above or below one of our two vanishing points. To demonstrate this a little better, why don't we go ahead and break down this drawing that I did of the Aeon Center entrance, which has a lot of slopes. Okay, so the first kind of slope is the easiest, and you see this a lot in drawings of environments, architectural drawings, interiors, so on and so forth. And that is a slope that is on a plane where the edges converge to the vanishing point. And even though that sounds confusing, it's really not. So that would be like this stair, for instance. And you can see that is on a wall. And those lines converge to the vanishing point. So when this is the case, and that's a good portion of the time, that slope is going to have what's called a false vanishing point that is directly above the vanishing point. And that's gonna be the case whether or not the object is actually butted up to the surface of that wall or not. So for instance, these rails have the same vanishing point because they have the same slope. So you can use that one false vanishing point to draw multiple edges which make multiple objects. Similarly here with the stair on the right, you can see if we just take the plane of the stair, that's going to go to a vanishing point. And because they're on the same slope, the, the handrails, all of them, are going to go to that same false vanishing point. Now you need to be aware that the false vanishing points are going to go in the direction of the plane that that's parallel to. So because we have, like we said, this plane, goes to our vanishing point here on the right. So the slope edges are going to go to false vanishing points on the right. Just like on this side, these rafters are somewhere on this plane. And we can just draw one up to the edge. And you can kind of see. So they're on that plane. If we take those back to the line that goes vertically through our vanishing point, we're going to get an intersection here. And then now you can see those all have the same slope. Okay, let's go ahead and set up a drawing in concept so I can show you some of the tools and features that I use when drawing slopes in two-point perspective. There are a few things that you want to do when you first start the drawing. And most importantly, I think, is to set up your brushes. And there's a brush that I always like to have on hand, and that is a brush that has 100% smoothing. It really doesn't matter what it is, but I prefer the wire brush. So let's turn that on, and I'm going to put it in the first slot. Just tap that. I'm going to select wire. And now right here, this little squiggle line, if you can see that, if I tap that, I just wanna make sure that's turned all the way up to 100%. And what that's gonna do, it's going to allow me to draw perfectly straight lines. The second brush that I want to have available is the slice tool because that is really efficient for cleaning up drawings fast. 
that is this one right here. I'm just going to click on that and make sure that slice is selected. The next thing that we want to do is we want to set up our two point perspective grid. That's super easy. So we want to make sure grid is turned on and then we can go to tap on the grid button. I already had that turned on, but make sure it's turned to two point grid. You can adjust the density and the line weight here. This is good. I want 30 and one. If you tap the square with the nine dots, it lives below your layers. You can now adjust your grid. So I'm going to zoom out. I'm just going to pull this up to where my horizon line is more towards the middle of the page. And then you can see the grids kind of give you an idea if you start to draw on top of these of how the perspective would look. Because you can move this around and move these vanishing points outside of the canvas, if you have a reference image, a photo, or a rendering, you can actually use that to set up your perspective. And then there's no guesswork as far as how that's going to turn out. First thing that you want to do once you have your perspective grid set up is you want to record the location of your horizon line and your vanishing points. And the reason that this is so important is because Concepts has the very cool feature of allowing us to move around our perspective grid. So this will allow us to do that, but then always come back to home base, always come back to the original vanishing points and horizon lines without having to deconstruct our drawing or figure it out. It's super awesome. So the way that you do that is you just draw a horizontal line with snap turned on. So instead of just marking the vanishing points with a hash mark or a dot, I want to draw big long vertical lines because I know that the false vanishing points, the potential false vanishing points, I haven't drawn anything yet. The potential false vanishing points will live on those vertical lines. And what that means is now I can draw my slopes in and they're going to intersect that vertical line and give me my false vanishing point. Just so much easier. So let's draw those lines in. And you want to make these as long as possible. So here you can see I have my vanishing point on the left and I have my vanishing point on the right. I have my horizon line. And then these two lines represent potential places for false vanishing points. So we're just going to draw a simple house. So to do that, I'm going to start by drawing in the box that'll be sort of the base of the house. And then we'll worry about the sloped roof and the roof line after that. Okay, so with snap turned on, and with my vanishing points set up, I'm just going to draw a quick box. And I'm not too worried about extending my lines or a lot of overlap because I'll clean this up later. Perfect, we have our box. We're going to put the peak of the roof centered on this front wall. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to draw an X through the face to find where that center point is. So I just turn snap off and I have my wire brush on, which will draw straight lines. And then that'll allow me to draw this and then I can move this around. So it'll now I can easily go from corner to corner. Then I got the middle. So because this isn't going to give me a vertical line, I want to not use that method. I want to turn on snap and snap will give me a vertical line and then I can just draw up from that point. I need to decide what that slope is. I'm going to turn off snap again. I've got my wire brush on and check that out. I can easily pick. Do I want it at a low angle? Do I want it at a high angle? Do I want it at a low pitch? Do I want it at a high pitch? I'm just going to pull it up to just about there. That looks pretty good. Now, you see I have this point that intersects the line that goes through my vanishing point, and that's my false vanishing point. And without even having to do anything else, I can get the back edge really easily, or anything else that's parallel, just by drawing. All right, well, what about the other side? Well, if I draw a line from where I established the peak of that roof down to the other corner, I can draw a line that goes back and gives me my false vanishing point on the bottom, which is right here. 
and I can easily draw in the back of the roof with the correct slope using that line. Now guess what? If I want to create the ridge of the roof through these two points, guess where that's going to go? Oh, you got it. That's how we know that it's right. It's going back through my vanishing point on the right. Success. The cool thing about this now is that I can use these vanishing points to draw objects that either are on the roof or parallel to the roof. So things like skylights, dormers, shingles. I can just take this line down and I have now sides of say a skylight, the profile of a chimney, whatever it is. You know, so if I turn snap on, let's just do a chimney because that's easy, right? and that lands perfectly on the roof. And that's the reason you don't wanna fake your slopes in because then when you fake them in, you don't have that reference point to draw more using the false vanishing point, right? So once you have that false vanishing point, that's something that you can use throughout the entire process to draw slopes correctly in two point perspective. And you can use those for all kinds of details. So now you're saying, Kevin, my drawing looks like a mess. I have all these lines that are going back to vanishing points and false vanishing points. How can I clean that up? Well, you could draw over it, and I am a big believer in just constructing layer upon layer, but there's a way to clean this up using the slice tool. So tap your slice tool. Make sure that it has some kind of thickness. You can see my, there I just had zero thickness. And then just draw a profile around what you want to just draw around the profile of what you want to clean up. And that's going to give you extension lines, but that's okay. And pretty common in architectural drawings. Again, you can always go back and clean that up. Now, there's a second part to this. Save your false vanishing points. So then just draw the slice tool because you don't want to lose those. And it's even better if you can put those on their own layer. So then just hold your stylus or your finger or your Apple Pencil on your iPad screen until you get the selection tool. You want to make sure lasso is selected and you want to make sure partial on is picked. And you can just tap those to turn those on. If they're not, then draw a selection bubble through those and hit the trash can icon to delete. Let's do the, that over here again. And that's super easy. And the reason to do it that way is because if you want to export these to another vector app like Affinity Designer or Adobe Illustrator or AutoCAD, when you do a hard mask or a soft mask, those are going to show up as vectors that basically just cover it. Whereas if you do the slice tool, that's going to clean up and it's going to take that vector geometry completely out of the drawing. The nice thing about using the align to grid snap option, like I, when I created that original box, is that you don't have these lines necessarily that go back to your vanishing points. You don't need that. So it's really convenient when you have to add a lot of line work, especially when it's close together. So if I wanted to draw shingles on this roof, and you can see that I drew some lines across the roof that go back to my vanishing point. But I want to draw the edges from my false vanishing point, right? So I have a lot to do. I The great thing is I can actually move my perspective grid. And like I showed you before, just tap those nine dots. And then just drag it up to match your false vanishing point. Now you can use your perspective grid with your false vanishing point to draw in those edges quickly. And no cleanup necessary. So there is another kind of slope that plays by a different set of rules. And the way that you have to draw those is you have to find a point where it starts and a, the point where it ends. And there's a lot of ways to do that, but I'm just going to show you one. And this would be a pyramid that I can actually, in this case, draw within this box. And the way that I'm going to do that, I want to draw it to the center. So again, I can use my wire brush and draw lines corner to corner on that side. And then because it fits perfectly within this box, I can actually just draw from this corner 
to that peak where it intersects and find all my sides. This kind of pyramid is gonna be one of the most common ways you run into that type of slope when doing architectural drawings. You may be saying, Kev, it's not worth it to find that point. It's just gonna be a lot easier to 3D model and then continue developing from there. Well, you are going to wanna to watch this video as soon as it's ready because there I show you how to build a 3D model using your iPad and then bring it into concepts and continue developing a sketch over the top of it. So check that out.